Hi friends, we are with a new video in Vbots ROS2 tutorial series. This is a second video in our tutorial series. So we'll go through some basics of last video where we started with installation of ROS2 on Linux uh, Ubuntu 20.04. So we went through this page and we have our ROS2 Foxy ready. After which we downloaded vbots so this is an official page which is cyberbotics.com here we downloaded vbots and we installed the debian package after this we installed vbots ros2 so this is a rep repository for reference so this is a repository which connects your vbots and ros2 after which we set up a new repository in Visual Studio Code. So this is a place where we downloaded the Debian package and we set it up for a new package. So this was all, all about our last video. So today in this video, we will be learning about different types of robot and we'll see some cool simulations which are available in VBots. So basically we will look at some stationary robots. So here stationary robots means their base is fixed and their end effector is moving. So they may have three degrees of freedom, six degrees of freedom. They are usually used in industrial applications and they are also used in surgical robotics. Also, we'll be looking at an example of mobile robots. So you see these cool dogs of Boston Dynamics moving. So we will look at some basic mobile robots which will give you an idea of how to build a robust and complex mobile robot. So we have many applications of mobile robots as well like in self-driven cars, warehouse automation and many more. So without wasting much of our time, let's start with this video. So we'll start with our first example which is of a mobile robot. In this case, we will be looking at a mobile robot named EPUC. So the link will be given in the description. This link has detailed description of how to run EPUC with ROS2 package. First of all, let's run the launch file. So in this case, I go to ROS2 workspace, which was already made in your last video. So I went to workspace. Now I have it callcon built. So I do source, source install setup dot bash. When I source this, now I can run this command. So if I run this command, if I copy this and paste this command, So in this case, I see an EPUC robot where it, it is in a scene and it has camera. So here you see red lines. These are distance sensor of EPUC camera and this is TOF long range sensor. So if you see in the description, it shows PS0 to PS7 are eight distance sensors and there is a camera as well in the front and there is a long range TOF sensor here. Today further, when we will do mapping, we will use that TOF sensor. You guys must also have this repository named ROS2Foxy because this is how ROS2 is installed. So now we will install the teleopt package. So we will do sudo apt get install ROS foxy so details of teleop node are here so it's called as teleop twist keyboard so we'll copy this this package this is an inbuilt package which is given by ROS to us so so it shows in my case it's already built so you guys will need to install this package. And now 
if I source this repository, so here I will do source ROS Linux 2 setup.bash and now I ROS run here ROS 2 run teleop keyboard teleop keyboard so when I on this I see a keyboard screen here so this is a very good package which is made by ROS 2 because here you can control your holonomic or non holonomic robot so holonomic robot is a robot which can rotate without translating where epoch is one of the example of holonomic robot and non holonomic mode will be like a car so where you can't rotate your car about its axis without translating forward so now as this node is on we will go to vbots we will open this terminal and if i click on i so it started moving you can see this the robot is moving and if you click on any it will stop moving so now this was using keyboard to control epoch now if you see the documentation it is very well documented to show you how to publish messages to velocity so if you give this message to command velocity it will follow linearly in x direction it also has examples of how to run camera how to use imu ground sensors and very good example of navigation where your robot is navigating around and it is looking for obstacles so this is a very good piece of documentation which you can refer and it will be a very good start for you guys in ROS2 world we also have mapping here this is what we are going to do today so let's copy this command if I copy this command we can paste this on new terminal so this is again the vbots repo so I need to source this source install setup.bash and if I paste this command and if I hit enter I see a point in forward direction where my robot is pointing and it is making a map so now if let's say in our way, if I rotate a robot it starts making map so you see your long range sensor is used to take the points in the world and convert it to map so now I can even move the robot so if I hit on I we go straight you see we can generate complete map by its motion so this is a very good implementation where you can map so for starters it's a great start to generate your own map it will be a really cool experiment to do so this is all in this way if I hit on any other button it will stop if you continue this you will complete the map now we'll visualize our RQT graph so many ROS users must be knowing this is a way how we can know what things are working internally so here if I source and now if I hit on RQT graph underscore graph if I enter I can see a complete node graph where we see our keyboard node which is publishing to command velocity topic and which is moving our epoch robot so epoch robot is publishing many uh, different types of sensor output like TOF which we are using for our map generation it it is publishing odom odometry that means motion of wheels it is publishing different sensors from ps0 to ps7 as we saw there were eight sensors from 0 to 7 distance sensors so these are the output of those sensors and we also see a scan topic where we converted tof into a scan and which is used by a mapping node so when we spawned our mapping node this is what it accepted scan and it's 
publishing a map topic. That is why you are seeing a map building in your RVs. Robot joints and motors are defined in TF. So these all things are visualized in RVs. So this was a small application where we showed that how you can map an unknown environment and get a pretty good output from the EPUC robot. We also have a real implementation of this robot and we will share some results. So now let's look at real robot EPUC 2. So here we should make a note that we are SSHing into Raspberry Pi. That means ROS2 is feasible and can also run in a small microcontroller like so Raspberry let's Pi. So run its drivers. Now we on RVS2 and you see at the bottom real robot is navigating and similarly we can see the output in RVS. So now let's do mapping. So on the right there is a real arena and now we will be using the sensor outputs of real robot and map in RVS. So the point cloud is generated by real epoch and is been used to make the map. So you see map made in real world is pretty similar. Now let's see the navigation in real world. So here you see an RVs output which has move base running inside epoch and our robot is reaching the destination in real world. You see the output of real and actual robot. Now let's look at a second example. Here we will be looking at a stationary robot. So this is a robot by Universal Robot Company. So you see there are many examples of collaborative working of these robots made by VBots. So this page has some description and stepwise to have a look. They also publish joint states and you can echo the joint states value. So I'll be posting the, the link for this page in the description below. So now let's look at an interesting example which VBOTS has made for us so that we can understand stationary robots better. So this example is already present in VBOT ROS package. So we will source install setup dot bash. Now we will do ROS2 launch is a launch file which has ABB robot which is picking a can and a universal robot. These robots are working in synchronization to achieve a task. Let's pause it for a second. And here I want you to have a look at the surrounding around. VBOTS provides us with many objects which will make our simulation surrounding tending to real. So now we see the simulation continuing. We see it once more and then I want you guys to have a look at something which is different in ROS2. So I'll pause this for a moment and did you guys notice that when we launched our launch file we had name.launch.py. Yeah, so some of you must have thought that when we had launch file in ROS, we did not have an extension of pi. So here we will have a look at the same launch file which we ran. Now ROS2 lets us write a launch file in Python script. So now we can add our own whiles and fors to make intricate launch files which was not possible in our XML format. So you see we need to make 
generate launch description and then you add in parameters and you close the function so this is like writing a function which will become a launch file later and you need to save your function name as name.launch.py and you can run it as a launch file so this is a feature which i wanted you guys to have a look and use it wisely because now you have power of python in your launch files so in our next videos we'll look at how to make subscribers publishers and do some interesting debugging of ross2 so this was all about today's video thanks for watching do subscribe stay tuned thank you